From this point forward, the word cheese will be bleeped because Michael finds it offensive. Hello and welcome back to the Fine Dining Podcast, the search for the most mediocre restaurant in America. <laughs> I'm your host, Michael Ornelas. I am joined once again by my good friend from college, Kelly Baldwin. I went to college. My name's Kelly and I went to college. <laughs> <laughs> There's a picture. I don't know if you remember this moment. Yeah. This was back. Is this the planking? Yeah. This was back when planking was a thing. <laughs> There's a photograph of Michael planking on a dresser. And I am planking on top of Michael's plank and on the dresser. And we are perfectly it flat. It was so beautiful. It was. I, yeah. If I can find it, I will put it okay. on screen right now. Okay. Which, by the way, I am now on YouTube. You can watch these episodes. Ooh. I am in Austin and have been for the past three episodes. Uh, the past three restaurants. I'm in Austin. I've been here for the past 37 years. <laughs> uh, so. so the set is a little bit different than my usual setup. Uh, I only managed to do one video episode so far from my normal set. But I will be back. I will be back there uh, momentarily. For those of you listening to this show for the very first time, this is the show where I am looking for the perfect five point double zero dining experience out of 10. That perfectly average, mediocre restaurant experience. And I'm doing this because when someone's like, oh, that restaurant's good or oh, that place sucks. What does I, that mean? When does it become like where is that switchover point from good to bad, bad to good? I want to know what is perfectly in the middle. I like the term perfectly mediocre as well. Yeah. There's some kind of humor there. A, a, a little a juxtapose. Yes. Yeah. And so I took my friend Kelly. Uh, I selected you specifically for the timing that I did around the fact that it is MS Awareness Month. It is. Multiple Sclerosis Awareness mm -hmm. Month. Uh, Kelly, you I'm have a MS. I'm a participant in MS. <laughs> participant. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> <laughs> you braved the elements to go to a place that isn't gonna make your life any healthier <laughs> we went to culver's uh, it's not it, yeah 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 culver's a midwestern wisconsin-based fast food burger place and an entrant into this year's september tournament boom and i am declaring them the number six seed oh there it is okay They're the number six seed okay we will see where that gets how they participate mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. come this September. So I'm excited for those of you listening for the first time. I know I've already I've said something to you, but I'm going to say another thing. But to you. Where have you been? No, I haven't said something. <laughs> and I would like to now. <laughs> how dare you how just discover dare this? you just come on board? Little Johnny come late knees. What would the episode of Johnny did you, be? Did you say Johnny come late knees? <laughs> Like his knees Lately's, are not on time. His knees are late. He he's there. I left my knees in the car. He's there, but the knees aren't. <laughs> Just a patellaless Johnny. Oh, bless his heart. <laughs> uh, I say thank you for wh whether you just found the show or you've been around a while. I love you all. Uh, please leave a comment, like, and subscribe. And my reviews of these restaurants are based on their atmosphere, their service, and also their. Food. Mm. Yummy. Mm. Fine dining party of two. Our table is ready. We've been talking a little bit too long. So Seven, about 17 minutes. Let's dive in. The table is ready. Follow me. Have you tried our chicken breast? Serving pancakes and ribs. I recommend the spaghetti. We're here to satisfy, not to impress. Your table is ready. Complimentary butter and bread. These walls have road signs. Nick knack. Cowboy hat, good luck cat, autograph guitar, some crap from your city. Behold the tchotchke of mediocrity. Fine dining, just fine dining, fine dining. Two letters on the sign are shining. Neon flickering, irregular timing. Identify the perfect five. Out of ten. Atmosphere. Okay, so there's a lot of like wooden signage with yeah. like the butter burger with like we love our farmers because oh, yeah. they advertised or we learned in the in the eat deets last week that their vegetables are farm fresh and all from Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. So they're very pro farmer. I saw something for their fish. Yeah, I saw like a fish fry. A like fish fry timing, sign. Yeah. I saw a crinkle cut fry or a mm -hmm. curd sign or mm -hmm. something, something like that. But yeah, they're just advertising with like nice artsy signage as opposed to just 
you know when you go in a Burger King and it's just like those vinyl stick on the yeah, window things yeah. and it's just there's a little more effort pictures. here. Yeah, it's a little mm-hmm. bit uh homier. They put a little more work in. Yeah, mm-hmm. there there was an extra step. Yeah, in in the, in the process of of flavoring the the inner decor. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also noticed that like. There were some hoarder elements in here. The tables were very clustered yeah, around was each that, other. There was like one group that they were all kind of like just cramped. Like together. no one could sit in them. No. In the or at least in the middle, like edges only. Yeah. And then and then it's just all booths around the the rest of the place. Mm-hmm. There was one table that had like a stick figure icon of mm. two chairs and a table mm-hmm. with like the the red line through them being do like, not do this do not this table set yeah uh and then a note on it that said this table is in for a deep cleaning please sit to another one but i didn't see anyone over there cleaning the table so when is that deep cleaning well there was happening? a spray bottle with chemicals not water it they was, started it it's was... just gonna clean itself maybe <laughs> and like a rag on it's top a soft of... cleaning table uh, Ooh. We're not that far away from that. Like, I want to see it. Real. I want to see it. AI is coming for all jobs. <laughs> there were like a lot of other customers in mm-hmm. construction. I did attire. See, yeah, a lot of like those reflective yellow vests, mm-hmm. and it, it it was almost comical because one would come in and eat and then leave the restaurant, and another one would come in. Yeah, it like, was like a cyclical thing. Like I. Is was there like just one giant, like a clown car out there, and they all just kept single filing like one by one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Into the restaurant, or it's like in a in kindergarten where it's like you all have to go up to the teacher and talk to her one on one, and then the teacher sends you back. Go get Dave now. And tell him to come in. Go get Marcus. Yeah. You know, like yeah, and it's just like one of the, that would be so adorable. They get their food and then they go out and, and they they're go, like, okay, they're ready for you. Hey, Rosalia, it's yeah. your turn to go in and eat. Miss Walker is ready for you now. There was also uh, like a freezer with a bunch of like pints of custard that you could take to go. I wondered if there the would be to go stuff. Yeah, uh, which okay. uh, I was considering grabbing an extra flavor for us to try here, but people typically don't like listening to people eat on a podcast. Yeah, that's a tough sell. It's a tough sell. Uh, so I didn't do it. And ice cream is like, or custard is a slurpy custard. food. It is slurpy. Yeah. But there was uh, one thing above all else that really stuck out to me. Mm-hmm. We turned down the row to go to where we ultimately ended up sitting. Mm-hmm. And on one of the tables, oh, yes. just as far as the eye can see mm-hmm. within the confines of this table booth, on the seats and on the tabletop, mm-hmm. Culver's bags, like paper bags, yeah, like, like takeout paper, bags. Yeah galore mm-hmm. uh, probably 60 of them i would love to guess a number but i'm not good guess at a that. number i was never good at that game guess a number how many m&ms are in the jar i oh i always wanted to win that game and i never won that game that's a stupid school. game but how, yeah I, my guess is like 60 to 70 that's bags more reasonable i would have gone over the top with my guess <laughs> 40 hundred it would have been in the hundreds why did i say 40 hundred Four, that's 4,000. Uh, I, I could have thought that this was a lot of bags and like kind of a weird thing if it just stopped here. But then there was more. I I had to go up later to grab us like plastic wear mm-hmm. and napkins and mm-hmm. stuff. And I turned down the other aisle way. And there are more, more bags. There's, of a these, whole, like, there's another table, like a rival table. Like they're on opposite sides, yeah. like east versus west. And I was like, this is so much. And I start walking back, and to the left of the entranceway, there are metal wiring. Is like, that the material? Like, um, like a shopping cart material yeah, shelf. Uh-huh, like a metro rack. If yeah. you, anyone who's worked in like sales before. Covered mm-hmm. in more and more bags, just levels upon. There had to be 200 of these there lunch sacks of, of Culver's mm-hmm. to, to go bags. Yeah. And it was just odd because I didn't know what was happening. It ma- it made me wonder mm-hmm. what was happening. It made me wonder uh, uh, very specifically, Kelly. Mm-hmm. What's, what's going, going on, on over, over there? there? What's going on over there? What's going on over there? Should I wear a? Should I care? What is going on over there? Uh, K- Kel Ball. Uh huh. <laughs> what's going on over there? <sighs> I thought about it and I've reached a concerning answer, Michael. You know, when like kids would play pranks on their neighbors, they uh-huh. get like a pla- like a paper sack uh-huh. and they fill it with dog poop. They put it on the doorstep of the neighbor 
light it on fire, ring the bell, and run. That's what Culver's is doing. Like, April Fool's Day is right around the corner. Hundreds of times. <laughs> hundreds of times they're doing this. They are pre-gaming for mm-hmm. April Fool's. They're getting ready, yeah. It's like a week, week and a half away, they something like hard. that. They go hard. They really commit. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I think Culver's, their entire team, plus Scoopy, are plus going to go out. That's why his name is Scoopy. He's the one out there scooping <laughs> the dog poop. <laughs> his role has been defined. He really lived It's up not to his about name. custard. No, it's, it's nothing about, to do with it's custard. It's about the, the second half of custard, mm-hmm. turd. Mm-hmm. It's just turd. Not it's custard. Just turd. It's just turd. It's just, <laughs> just turd. turd. Scoopy oh, going out, filling heart. these bags. Yeah. They're ringing doorbells. They're running. The evidence clearly leads back to them because they're all Culver's They don't bags. care. Like, they're bragging <laughs> about it. They're like... What are you going to do? Yeah. Stop eating Try butter it. burgers? Try it. Come for us. Yeah. We dare Fearless. you. Fearless. We dare you. That's really scary and intimidating. Think about the people that have maybe been victims of this kind of... Abuse? Abuse. Yeah, yeah. And they come to the Culver's to get their lunch... They see the bag They're triggered. and go, oh, my God, I know it's coming. They, they have like a like an mm-hmm. end of usual suspects. Like they put it yep. all together. It's all coming together. Yeah. And then like just Scoopy is smirking at them over the counter. Yeah. I think we've mm-hmm. I think we, we figured it, it out. I think it. that is, in fact, what's, what's going, going on, on over there. there? What is going on over there? We, we got to rate this atmosphere a little bit. We got to okay. we got to hold out some thumbs and do something with them. I don't know. Yep. There's nothing inspiring about the atmosphere at a Culver's. It's just kind of whatever to me. It was a little bit better. It was better than than other fast food restaurants. I don't know. There's a wet floor to. sign. There's a table that you can't access. There's a cluster of tables. There's bag real estate all over the place. Yeah, yeah. Location, location, location. <laughs> <laughs> front table, front table. Side rack. Shopping yeah. cart rack. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Like nothing about this hmm. impressed me. It was just okay. It was pretty standard for me. I'm going right in the middle. I'm going no thumbs, no thumbs up, no thumbs down. Okay, zero thumbs zero for the thumbs. atmosphere at a Culver's. For okay, me. I'm going one thumb up, just because it was cleaner than most fast food places uh-huh. that I eat in. Or at least they promise there will be a deep clean of a they table. They promise. <laughs> So maybe it's my hope speaking here. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, And like you had mentioned, the signs, the posters were a little bit nicer, more thoughtful than. Yeah. 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 I I, like Mm -hmm. that's the thing that counterbalances all the negative that I said. But I was basically saying why to me it doesn't go up. Up. Okay. Because like, yeah, those are nice touches. But not and, enough to. Uh, yeah, and like mm-hmm. the place was clean enough. I did. I, I mm-hmm. didn't check out the bathroom. Or I anything. didn't either. I thought as I was driving to meet you, I was like, I should not pee before I leave the house, so <laughs> I, I can, should hold it for. I Culver's. should hold it so I can intentionally use the restroom and give a good word of mouth on but it. But then, but then you were like, "Can I use the bathroom?" And they were like, "Just go in the bag." And I and then in I one of those paper sacks. And then just set it on the table there. <laughs> Thanks. And like, oh, oh my, unique. <laughs> <laughs> what an experience I've had. So one thumb up. One thumb up for me. Zero thumbs for me. Service. All right, kiddos. <gasps> now we get to talk about mm, the service the team service. here. I don't know. They were nice enough, but they were kind mm. of a non-factor overall. When we first walked in, there were, I thought, too many of them behind the counter. Like why do, right? <laughs> but there looked to be like a woman in street in oh, street yeah. clothes behind the just counter, kind of like emptying out mm-hmm. a cabinet and just talking to them in Spanish. Like maybe she works there, but she wasn't working today. But she still felt that's the, the need vibe I got because there be seemed to be a familiarity there? with everyone, yeah. and they were speaking back to her in Spanish yeah, uh-huh. and not alarmed that there was a person behind the gathering counter. stuff. Yeah. yeah. So from context clues, I'm going to assume she was allowed back there. But yeah. yeah, there was just a, it was kind of jarring, I guess, that there were so mm. many people back there. There were too many people back there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the lady that we interacted with that we ordered from, mm-hmm. I thought was, she was nice. I thought she was nice. She was patient as mm-hmm. we were kind of holding up the line a little bit before mm-hmm. we, you know, we were funneling people past right. as like, hey, yeah, yeah. we're going to take ready, our go time. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. And I go up there, I'm like, we're going to get a lot of food right now. And she goes. She was not phased by I, that. I can handle this. Mm-hmm. She did. This ain't her first rodeo. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Yeah. I mean, she answered mm-hmm. questions yep. if, if I had, had any. Yeah. 
and she was nice and then asked us, and this is a very key part of our experience, would you like your desserts now Hmm. or later? Mm -hmm. And I said later because I thought that meant with the food that comes later as opposed to right this moment. Right this moment. Yeah. I didn't realize that, no, they're going to give you the food and then never bring you yeah. <laughs> your, dessert. your dessert. And you have to remember. You have to remember and, and ask. And come back up to the counter and ask for it. Yeah, which yeah. Uh, based on the reaction of the people at the counter didn't seem like it was the plan. Like it, it oh, seemed okay. like an oversight. Okay. Based on how they responded when to me asking. When you went up there? Because they were mm-hmm. like, oh, you didn't get that? And I was like, no, sir. Oh. No, sir, I did not. Okay. And then there was another guy I interacted with, uh, which this is kind of funny to me. I went up. And uh, so one of the items that we ate, spoiler for later, was the Atlantic cod, the fried Uh cod. uh And they had five optional dipping sauces. Oh, that's right. And I went up there and I was like, can I try the boom boom sauce? And the guy kind of like looks around at the other coworkers and then just goes to grab it for me. Now, I'm not blind. I'm not dumb. I saw both the context of him looking around and uh, like, should I? And the sign that had the sauces on it says that they're 45 cents a pop. (gasps) He gave you? He was going to give me free sauce. Mm -hmm. I offered to pay. Okay. He accepted payment. Okay. And then I was like, you know, does it have cheese in it? It is yellow, and I want to make sure before I do that. Mm -hmm. Um, But, yeah, and then after trying the Boom Boom sauce, I feel like they should have paid me 45 cents. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, no, there was just like a a weird uh, moment in that where Mm. like he seemed like he was going to break a rule for me, but then I I took the tension away from him. Okay, okay. So I was the hero. He was conflicted and you saved him. I saved his ass. I saved his job. He will get to spread bags on all doorsteps Mm -hmm. a little bit Because of you. Because of me. Wow. I'm a hero. Okay. And then, yeah, there was confusion from the guy Mm -hmm. who... I went up for the dessert follow up mm-hmm. with. Yeah. But everyone was nice. You know, they do bring out your food. You get a little, you know, one of the little. Uh, yeah, like a little stand. A little teepee. Uh-huh. uh-huh. A little triangular thing with your yeah. number on both sides. And mm-hmm. you put it on your table like what Whataburger does. This, and it said on there, worth the wait. Yeah. Debatable. Yeah, I don't know if I would say it was worth the wait. It was certainly. I mean, it wasn't a long it wait. It wasn't even a long wait. So that's not something but that it's, like I would it, have it's not. It's this. not the type of food that I'm just like, oh, my gosh. I can't wait for it. <laughs> it's not like, you know, when you get home at the end of a long day and you get to put on sweatpants. Mm-hmm. That's worth the wait. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This did not bring like the relief. That euphoria. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Culver's euphoria. <laughs> so, yeah, when, when I'm thinking of this service team, mm-hmm. they were all. Nice enough, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but it is not table service. Yeah. It's not like a waiter's coming and taking your order. Right. They were all pleasant, but just the setup didn't go above and beyond to uh-huh. crack out of zero thumbs for mm-hmm. me. So I'm, again, right in the middle when it comes to the service. Yeah, it was not. There was nothing negative. There was nothing stellar. And I think the f- the nature of it being a fast food fast joint. food joint, like you're not getting table, like they brought the food to us, thank you, <laughs> but like it's not like a waiter that's coming and serving us right. and waiting on us. And and the thing that I love about table service is the rapport you build. Like right, yeah, I, I love joking with a oh, waiter totally, and they <laughs> pretend to love it. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. That's the dance. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I also have to go zero thumbs. Just because of the like the nature of the, the format, the style of yeah, the style yeah, yeah, of yeah. service it was. Mm-hmm. Food, yum, yum, yummy. Okay, we ate our weight in Culver's. Mm-hmm. I would I, say I weigh as much as the food that we ate at Culver's. Yeah. You, is, is you it, put me on the scale, you put the food on the other scale, and it balanced right. Which out. is a testament to how much food, mm-hmm. because you are a large person. I'm so big. <laughs> 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 so uh let, let's start in in side land okay fries ch- curds and onion, onion rings, rings. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. those are the sides we got okay i would not touch one of those things I know, so you, I know. uh let's start on fries mm-hmm. let's start on onion rings okay. because i have the same note and the same score for both of them okay these are average uh-huh just average as average can be 
you taste a French fry. This is like it, when you when you think of like what's a fry that's not good or bad? Culvers. You okay. think of an onion ring that's not good or bad? Culvers. Mm-hmm. I thought these are right in the middle. Five out of ten on, on both, both for me. Okay. Okay. Mine's a little bit different. I f- I liked the fries more than the onion rings. I thought they were very middle of the road. Yeah, yeah. But I kept going back to the fries, which told me that I liked them because I wanted <laughs> more of them. Sure. So I went, well, let me see my notes here. I went 5.5 on onion rings and I went six on the fries. Okay. I mean, so you're still within the, the mm-hmm. conversation of mediocrity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're a little bit, just because Slightly you kept going back. Like, I kept okay, going I'll, back for the fries. I'll go a little higher. Yeah. All right. All and right, these all right. were crinkle cut fries, which is not usually my favorite fry because I grew up with a mom who we would get like the or the, the orida. Cr- yeah. In the bag of the, the freezer the, section. The, the big red bag yeah, that and you is just frozen. Bake the whole, you dump the whole bag on a tray and you bake it in the oven. And you baste it in tears. They were never good. Yeah. So in my mind, I just always equate that with to a crinkle, crinkle cut. cut. Yeah. And these were crinkle cut fries, but they were better than that. that of course. <laughs> they were better than bad. They were better than horrible bag oven fries. Yeah. A ringing endorsement. Yeah. <laughs> If you listen to the show, you you heard the thing at the front where I don't like ch-s. I bleep the word ch-s. We're not allowed to really say it. You're going to get to talk about the ch-s curds, mm-hmm. but you only get one minute to do so. Oh, dang. So I'm okay. going to put one minute on the clock. Talk about the ch-s curds. Give your rating. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Okay, so I got the ch-s curds. Now, some of these, they're yellow ch-s inside, and some of them are white ch-s inside for me the uh the breading on the outside was a little bit too thick for the size of the curds which are not very big um i've also eaten these before and had them really when they're really good they need to be like really hot and fresh for them to be top notch the longer they sit there just like the more they go downhill and i kept finding myself looking at my rating and wanting to like lower it Just each time. Just pick away at it. Yeah, slowly yeah. but surely. And I thought, no, they were that score when I first took it a imbibed. bite. Right. And so I can't, it's not fair to change them and score them for what they are now. So I went with, flipping the page, 4.2. 4.2 out I've of 10. I've had these before when they were good. Uh huh. These were not their best showing. And that is one minute. Boom! Yeah, uh, I was disgusted Mm -hmm. just by the presence on the table, by all the marketing materials about them. They really went hard on the They love their Yeah. I do not. It grosses me out. Mm -hmm. As we talked about last week, I have food trauma. Don't we all? With (laughs) And you have it with root beer. I have it with root beer, so So. I understand. So now let's move into uh, just terrible land. The cod. We got the... Atlantic cod, Atlantic cod, I think is what it was called. The mm-hmm. the fried fish mm-hmm. tender, mm-hmm. basically. This thing tasted like a freezer. I don't yeah. care if I'm eating something that was frozen mm-hmm. versus fresh. But if I can taste mm-hmm. the melted ice that has become yeah. water as a f- flavor and in this, the meat. It wasn't freezer burn taste. No. But just like that melted ice yeah freezer ice yeah, yeah. i know what you're saying mm-hmm. yeah and i'm like i, I don't want this <laughs> and no. I, I and i gave it a couple chances with the boom boom sauce yep you did and you know boom boom is supposed to sound exciting when you order something called a boom boom sauce mm-hmm. you expect maybe a kick oh i want a kick it was a pretty bland sauce it was my note one word lame oh yeah 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 i went Three out of ten on the boom boom sauce. Oh, I didn't. I didn't rate the boom boom sauce. I'll have to think now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, conjure a memory. Yeah, if you can think of. Uh, and then I had the tartar sauce with it, which mm. was better, but it was kind of just whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and when the tartar sauce is the preferred thing over yeah. boom boom, yeah, you're not living up to your name. Yeah, boom boom. I agree. Uh, I went five out of ten on the uh, tartar sauce, and when you put that three and that five together, I went three point five. On the cod. On the cod. Okay. Okay. So let's see. Let me think of numbers. The boom boom sauce, you had three point, you had three. Can I help you think of numbers? Yes. The square root of 64. Seven. That's a great number. And and then afterwards has to be 11, I think. Yeah. Okay. Uh, And then, of course, 
69. Oh, he did it. Okay, so for the tartar... <laughs> <laughs> the tartar sauce, I agree. I liked better than the boom boom sauce. And that's unusual for me because I'm not a tartar sauce kind of person. Gal. I'm not a tartar gal. Yeah. So for the boom boom sauce, I'd probably say 3.5. Yeah. And then it the, wasn't an impressive thing. It wasn't at all. And I wanted it to, with a name like boom boom sauce, I want to be impressed. They should rename it womp womp sauce. Oh, womp womp. Yeah. For the tartar sauce, I liked this more than. Most tartar sauces I've had in my life. I might go six You're on the go tartar six. sauce. Yeah. And then the cod overall. The cod overall. Oh, I was. You were three. Three and a half. I could be talked down. Mm, I went 2.1 on the cod. But granted, I'm not a huge seafood person. So yeah, yeah. for it to change my mind, it has to be really good. And this was not really good yeah to me like it was a bl- uh, it was a pervasive blandness mm-hmm. as, as opposed to like an offensive taste yeah and then when you add in like the soggy breading for me oh yeah the bottom just, was falling out it like, was, the, the part that soggy. was making contact with the tray that it was on flap it, is how i would describe what came off of yeah and it just the the grease had soaked in it was very yeah real oily yeah yeah mm-hmm yeah, not a good, not, not a, a good, good thing. showing. Not a good not showing. Not a good thing. I was not uh, hooked on the cod. That's one of the upper viewers. Said. Are you making a a fishing the joke? Fish joke. Was that a little fishy to you? I'll stop. <laughs> and that's been this episode of the Fine Dining Podcast. <laughs> Thank you so we much. We didn't for finish joining. the episode. <laughs> we, we, one of the hosts is being put in. The Boo Box. (laughs) The Boo Box? (laughs) From Hook. I just watched Hook the other night. And so, like, that's... I haven't seen it in a very long time. Okay, well... Is there a thing called the Boo Box? The Boo Box. box. It's one of the the pirates betrayed Captain Hook by saying that he wasn't going to beat Peter Pan. So he gets put into the Boo Box, basically like a treasure chest that they've emptied out and have filled with scorpions. They put this person in there, lock him in the Boo Box. For how long? We don't know because it doesn't ever, it's never resolved. Oh, wow. They're just, he, they're, he's just put into the box. That's and like, that's the scene. see ya. And that pirate is actually Glenn Close, like in pirate makeup. Wait, is it for real? Yes. Nice. Yeah. Blew my mind when I learned that. Okay. Fun tangent. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get to decide what was fun. <laughs> we did great, team. <laughs> great job, everyone. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> So now let's talk about burgers. Now, I mentioned and announced that Culver's is going to be in the September tournament. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so in the interest of suspense, we're not going to give our numbers away. We're just going to, g- oh. in a general sense, talk about how we liked them. Okay. So just like descriptions, but not scores. Yeah. And you know what? I'm, we're not even going to talk about the first round burger until September. Okay. Okay. So we will leave that for September. Okay. But we can talk about the second and third round burgers because mm. I don't know. It may not even get out of the first round, but I want. Okay. Yeah. You know, I want those to be. That's fair. In the world. I think that's fair. So our first round burger that we're not going to like go into, we got the butter burger, mm-hmm. which is just a very basic, mm-hmm. plain burger with. You get a single or a double, two a double. kind of s- smash patties, mm-hmm, kind of mm-hmm. like very thin with like the griddle marks and stuff yeah, yeah. and a buttery bun. Mm-hmm. So that's the butter burger. We also got the Culver's Deluxe, mm-hmm. which is essentially that plus the veggie uh, toppings, lettuce, tomato, onion. Was there pickle? There might have been a, some pickle I, on I there and there mayo. Was there was mayo. Yeah. I thought that this worked a little bit better than i expected it yeah to. same um because you look at it and it's not yeah it, it doesn't it's not like this in. standout thing no, where you're just like uh-uh. this thing is whoa ugh. wow yeah yeah it's just yeah. kind of an unassuming mm-hmm. it's a humble burger mm-hmm. and i thought that the ingredients were all pulling their weight in equal yes sense it was they were greater than the sum of their parts it was impressive how well everything came together yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. you compared it to an ensemble cast yeah a movie with an ensemble cast where you're like wow here's a here's a good actor oh they're a good actor oh i like them this was the les mis of this was les mis Mis. yeah so it all comes is that ensemble or is that just Mm. russell crowe and hugh jackman and anna hathaway yeah you know what i don't know what i'm talking about what's a good ensemble movie (sighs) I want to say love, actually, but I actually don't 
love love actually mind blower but that's like a typical ensemble that is an cast. ensemble that yeah. is an example of an ensemble cast mm-hmm. not necessarily a good one in the sense mm-hmm. of the culver's deluxe yeah yeah and you can get the score on that burger if culver's advances in september let's see in september mm-hmm. uh, and then the last burger that I got mm-hmm. was the Culver's Bacon Deluxe. So the same one as before, but add bacon to it. Add bacon. Mm-hmm. And the ratios were different. Yes. I felt like all the all the ingredients that were in the Culver's Deluxe were in differing amounts mm-hmm. compared to one another. Yeah, the proportions were different. Because the first bite I took, I didn't get any bacon in the bite, and yet yeah. it still tasted different. Yeah from the the regular deluxe that I got, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. the non-bacon deluxe. Uh, and then I got a bite with bacon, and the bacon was an improvement. Yes, I agree. But it's like one of those things where how do I talk about or rate this burger if I feel like the bacon would have been better on the other one? Yeah, yeah. It's almost... It's just an inconsistency. That's what it is. It's almost an inconsistency, like not the nature of the burger but the the consistency between that and the previous one that we had, yeah. maybe one was left on the griddle longer or the yeah, ratio yeah. of toppings was I, it, different. To me, it seemed like it was within the veggies mm. where the 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 levers yeah. were pulled uh-huh. in different directions. Yeah. yeah. That's that's my read on it. But uh-huh. what do I know? You've never eaten a burger before in your I've life. I've never so. had a burger before. <laughs> so you don't know nothing. In my life. <laughs> So now let's get to the part where Culver's did impress us. Oh, they took a turn. It was dessert, a good turn. Dessert, which we, we had to advocate for our Sweet right treats. to dessert. You did, yeah. Yeah, I had to go up and claim them and be like, hey. These yo, are ours. We didn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My <laughs> Just treats. hug them on the counter. Mm. Swipe them in. Like a cat pushing mm-hmm. a glass off a table. Mm-hmm. We went in opposite directions. We both yep. got a concrete. You mm-hmm. got vanilla. We vanilla. I got chocolate. Chocolate. And we get two mix-ins. Mm-hmm. I went with butter cake bites, mm-hmm. basically, mm-hmm. and salted caramel. I went with marshmallow creme. Creme. C-R-E-M-E. Creme. With, with, a, with, a little with an accent over the first E. Marshmallow creme and brownie pieces. And I think we both did okay. Yeah, because we tasted each other's. We tasted each other's Uh uh, concretes, which I I don't know why they're called concretes, but it seemed like the type of mixer they used is probably It was a a giant concrete truck, right? That's the only (laughs) explanation. (laughs) That's the only explanation that I'll buy. Yeah. (laughs) They were literally, for anyone who didn't have a porch, they were creating porches so that they could leave flaming bags of poop I wondered why it was so loud in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a concrete (laughs) mixer from outside, yeah. I thought these were really good. These were very good. I got the first bite of my chocolate uh, with the salted caramel. The butter cake bites were like little, I mean, they weren't cubes. They were rectangular like, Yeah, prisms. it was like someone baked a cake and then like chopped it into tiny Into little rectangles. Chunks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Dropped them in, mixed them in. And I thought that those were okay. This might be orderer's error mm. in terms of just picking things that may not have well, mixed as perfectly. And I convinced you on the butter cake. I'm the one that told you to get the butter but cake. But I was so heavily I'll considering it. it. Okay, okay. I, I suggested it, and you're like, "Oh yeah, oh yeah, you're like ooh butter cake." You you confirmed a thing that I okay. that I put out into the world. Okay. Um, I think if it was just the chocolate and caramel uh-huh. concrete, this probably would have had a good argument for being mm. amongst the best shakes. Mm-hmm. I thought the butter cake bites uh, detracted a little, a little bit. But all that said, I still went eight and a half mm-hmm. out of ten. Like, it it was yeah. very good. Was very and the good. chocolate was so rich. It was really smooth, too. When I tasted yeah. yours, it was, like, super creamy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did you have a score for mine? If I were to score yours, it would maybe be just a couple of decimal points below mine. Below yours. Only because I tend to, with ice cream desserts, lean towards vanilla over chocolate. Sure. But that's just my preference. That's not a reflection on the quality. You were you were side-eyeing me the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for you to look away so I could knock it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then yours. Mine was vanilla with the marshmallow creme and the chocolate brownie, brownie chunks. chunks. Yeah. yeah. And it was so good. Like, as soon as I took that first bite, I was like, oh, man, like, this is 
this I, is what I ordered for. it correctly. I did it right. Yeah. Like the ice cream treats are what would make me go back to Culver's. And it's not an uncommon viewpoint, I mm. think, amongst amongst the populace. Okay. I really liked yours too. I did prefer mine because yeah. of just I have a chocolate preference yeah. and I thought that the the caramel bites like with mm-hmm. Ugh. I think the texture of, for my opinion, the texture of yours was better because it was just so silky smooth. It's, it's but I liked the flavor of mine better. I yeah, gave yeah. it an 8.8. Yeah, and I gave yours an 8, just okay. a, a flat 8, uh-huh. uh, which both of us seem to agree. These are great desserts. Mm-hmm. Really good desserts, yeah. Uh, yeah, I would I would put Culver's in the conversation when it comes to the dessert game. Yeah, like, hey, let's get in the car and go get like a frozen dessert? treat somewhere. You want to go to Culver's? Culver's yeah. You betcha. Yeah, yes. Mm-hmm. All that said, factoring in these excellent desserts doesn't drag up the floor enough. It didn't for me. I wanted to love Culver's food. Mm -hmm. I had heard a lot about Culver's. Mm -hmm. And like the burgers, again, I mean, I'll score them later. They were good. They didn't set my world on fire. They didn't blow my mind. But they were good. Like, I liked the burgers. But Mm -hmm. man, was that cod just Ooh. a sad experience yeah. the sides i really wanted more yeah the sauces the, the sauces, dipping sauces yeah. not could have had a stronger showing yeah both of them I, I think just overall i thought culver's could have been stronger i don't have any thumbs to give culver's i don't have any thumbs in any department anywhere mm-hmm. for culver's so I zero also thumbs. i also gave zero thumbs on yeah. food the lows were low the highs were high and there was a lot in the middle so Kind of just yeah. all balanced out. Canceled out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, when you're giving a 2.1. I gave 2.1 to that poor fish. And then an 8.9. 8.8 8. 8 on that. 8.8. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're, yeah. You're sitting around the two ends of the spectrum. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So no thumbs on the food for Culver's. We got to put all of it together and score it. Mm, numbers. Final rating. <laughs> All right. Uh, no thumbs for me on atmosphere. No thumbs for me on service. No thumbs on food. We are just, mm-hmm. uh, were you thumbless across the board as well? I did one thumb up for atmosphere. You were one atmosphere. One on thumb. atmosphere. No on service. No on food. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When I'm looking at my score, to me, yeah, it's right in that mediocrity range. Mm-hmm. It's encroaching upon five. But honestly, I thought that if some of these no thumbs were going to get a thumb, some of them were veering more towards down than up. Yeah, I agree. So this is this is a little bit on the low side of mediocre. Mm-hmm. I'm going 4.54 okay. for a Culver's. We're pretty close then. Yeah, where are you I, at? I felt the same way you did, and I went with 4.63. 4.63. Yeah, we put those things together. Mm-hmm. Culver's is going to go up on the tchotchke of mediocrity when I get back in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. 4.59. Yes, and mediocre. Not quite as good as Applebee's. Okay. That feels right to me. It really does. Mm -hmm. Like, it, I hear that number and I'm like, yeah, that checks out. Yeah, that matches. That That checks out. Yeah. Uh, but you know what this means? What's that? Do you know what this means? I've never heard of this show before, and I've never listened, so I have no idea what this means. I will tell you what it means. It means that we did not find the most mediocre restaurant, which means that we need to keep <laughs> looking. <laughs> what I'm Are you doing? just whiffing the microphone? <laughs> just Does like, it smell like everyone else's breath that is recorded? I just want to put my mouth, if I talk like this, that works, right? <laughs> Honestly, I don't think it sounds that it different. It looks really You dumb. just look... <laughs> <laughs> okay. You look like a person <laughs> smelling cotton candy. <laughs> but it means that we got to keep looking for another place to go. Okay. We got to find somewhere that Ooh. could maybe be more mediocre mm-hmm. than Culver's. How do we do that, a Michael? perfect five point. We play a game. We put it to just a little game. Okay. That I like to call the, the headline, headline game. game. The rules of the headline game are as follows. Michael will present three headlines to his co-host that include this week's restaurant. They can be made up or they can be actual headlines. 
If the co-host can correctly guess if at least two out of three are real or fake, they will get to select next week's restaurant. However, if Michael stumps them, he'll select again. Are you ready to play, you two? I'm ready. You are ready. ready All right. Ready to play. First headline. Okay. This very Wisconsin marriage proposal features a Packers jersey, Culver's sign, and a concrete mixer to celebrate. I like that you added a T into Wisconsin again. Did I? You did. You're not even aware did that you're I stu- really? You totally did. No. Marriage proposal? Hold on. Lo- okay. I'm going to go back to the replay because I'm convinced I didn't. So whatever happened, <laughs> your honor. I'd love your to honor. see I'd love to see your reaction to this. This very Wisconsin, Wisconsin, Wisconsin. Well, I mean, I'm not going to actually no, know. No, you'll know. But in post-production, <laughs> I will find out. Marriage proposal involving a Packers jersey. Culver sign Culver and, a sign and a concrete mixer, mixer to celebrate. Mixer. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm just not a big romantic, so this doesn't pull on my heartstrings. <laughs> so I'm going to say false. My cold-blooded heart is going to say false, Michael. All right. All right. <laughs> Second headline, FBI offers $10,000 reward for identification suspect in serial Culver's robberies. What is they ro- what are they robbing? The Culver's. The Culver's. What are they getting from there? All those bags that are lined up and waiting to have dog poop in them? Yeah, yeah. I want to believe that in my heart, so I'm going to say true. Yeah, say true. Mm-hmm. One false, one true. Last headline. Culver's to close four Indiana area restaurants due to new legislation. You're no longer welcome here. New legislation? What would that legislation be? What could it be against? Like against fast food? Not in the Midwest. Not in this country. (laughs) Or maybe they can't be like, is there like a radius where like you can't be within so many, there can only be so many restaurants within a certain radius. Oh. I'm torn on this one. There's too many school zones. Too many sp- People children. are speeding to the concrete. I'm going to say false. You're going to say false. I'm going to go with false. All right. First headline. This very Wisconsin marriage proposal features a Packers jersey, Culver sign, and a concrete mixer to celebrate. You said false. That was true. Oh, no. My bitter heart got the best of me. <laughs> <laughs> FBI offers $10,000 reward for identification suspect in serial Culver's robberies. A very slapdash sentence. You said true. That was true. Yeah. I was really hoping that the bad grammar was something you would assume I messed up and not the actual. What were they robbing, did it say? I think like the 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 cash cash, register. They went from Culver's to Culver's. Okay, I thought they were stealing like food. Serial Culver's robberies. I thought they were just stealing food from, okay. I love that the FBI got involved. It's not even the local authorities. They went straight to the top, yeah. $10,000. Yeah. Have you seen this man? (laughs) <laughs> Lastly, Culver's to close four Indiana area restaurants due to new legislation. You're no longer welcome here. You said that was false. You did, in fact, correctly suss out whether or I not sussed. that was false. That, I was, sussed. that was a lie. I made that up. Uh, so that means you win the headline game. You Ooh, got two correct. Boom. One I wrong. I did it. God, I achieved my goals. You get to pick where I'm going next time. Okay. Where is that going to be? So and I rem- keep in mind, mm-hmm. keep in mind, whatever you were about to say, wipe it from your mind. Start over. <laughs> fast food, fast casual, any chain establishment is on the table. OK. OK, good. Yeah. So I remember listening to when your girlfriend was on, Joyce, and she was talking about she really likes the hot dogs at Costco. <laughs> and I know uh-huh. they have I know they have more food. Do you want me to review the Costco mm-hmm. concession I kinda, stand? I kind of do. Get those hot dogs. Cool. Well, to start next week, mm-hmm. part one, and then part two, a week later, I'm going to go to Costco. Woo! I'm going to have to get a membership. <laughs> just to get the food. To, Are you going to go in and buy stuff at Costco? No. You're I'm gonna, just going to get the I'm food. just going to pay for the membership for a year and go this one time. Okay. That sounds reasonable. Sounds financially responsible. That sounds good. Kelly, thanks so much for joining Yay, me. Thanks, Michael. It was a lot of fun having you yeah. on. We didn't find the most mediocre restaurant in America. Not this time. We're going to have to keep looking. The search does, in fact, continue. But but, but before I sign off, follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Fine Dining Podcast. 
Have a fine day. The search continues. We still need the perfect five. The search continues. Like and subscribe. The search continues. Our journey did not conclude. The mother of search continues. Write us an iTunes review. And hey, while you're at it, why don't you go ahead and make it five stars, huh? Come on. Follow us on TikTok. The same on Instagram. All the socials. At Fine Dining Podcast, we have a website, FineDiningPodcast.com. Buy our t-shirts, then put them on. And don't forget, you can always suggest where we go next. Okay, we're going to find it. Mediocrity, the search continues. See you next week. <coughs> Hurt my throat a little. Have a fine day.